Hello, this is Peter Bell, and I'm here with Mr. Conrad Swanson, President and CEO of International Samuel Exploration. Hello, Conrad. Peter, how are you today? Very well, thanks. And how are you? Uh, I see some news out from the company, August 28th, 2018 here. Yes, uh, thank you. We uh, sent some uh, field crews in for uh, a new anomaly that we found. Uh, not that far away from the uh, Golden Ridge uh, discovery, and uh, we have uh, 200 and, uh, or 376 uh, samples in the lab that were from the uh, Lucifer zone. In addition to that, uh, we re received initial uh, geophysics IP on the Lucifer, and from that, it was determined by the experts, Alvin Jackson, Mike Mazaloski, Derek Strickland, PGOs, that um, we needed to do more. So we instructed the, uh, the crew, uh, Peter Walcott and associates, Alex Walcott is actually heading that up, and um, they'll be infilling uh, between the first two lines at 250 meter spacing. And then they'll do an additional two two lines to the west of the uh, of the first two lines at 250 meter spacings to uh, to uh, complete the anomaly. And the soils that I mentioned previous are from the from the fringes of the of the Lucifer heading in a north east and east direction, um, taking care of that particular uh, addition as, as we expand uh, east with the anomaly. Yeah. Well, and it's quite a large land package that you have there in between Mickey East, Mickey West, Grizzly, <laughs> Lucifer, uh, a horseshoe, really, that connects up to uh, Evram's property on either side. And then, as you say, uh, Golden Ridge with the Hank in between. Yeah, and we've got Abin to the yeah. west and the southwest and um, and uh, to the very west and northwest, we've actually got tech. So um, pretty well in a good area. And in between our, um, our Lucifer zone and our Grizzly zone, which are kind of like in an east-west uh, direction, in between there is the Voigtberg property that Gold Corp had. Uh, which they did a deal with tower resources on that one, but it's mm. uh, the anomaly the anomaly, which is just a very large anomaly you'll see it on our <clears throat> on our web page there it goes goes right across from the grizzly down southeast through the Voigtberg and then onto the uh, Lucifer property and that's where it kind of is pronounced the most and that's a uh, is that and the anomaly you're referring to is that regional or is that something that you know you identified in this program no that was a regional uh, uh anomaly yeah. identified through uh, Min, uh bc government uh, files and then we've expanded on it uh plus over time uh there's been work done on the on the grizzly zone which is our western zone um, there's been work done there, trenching, and uh, some significant numbers through that. Uh, the Voigtberg had some good numbers on it. Uh, we weren't able to obtain that, but uh, we've got the property on either side of it. And then back into the uh, Lucifer zone, which has had probably the most work done um, to date. And I'm looking at the regional geophysics, the, uh, the magnetics there, right? So looking at the Lucifer just off to the east of that big low. Um, is it really the lows, the highs? What are we, at a broad scale, uh, is, it, is it the magnetic anomaly that's really driving prospectivity there? Or Well, there's a couple of theories out here. <clears throat> um, one is the red line theory, which was a, uh, 2014 uh, PhD theory put in by some uh, geophysicists, geologists that looked at Every deposit in British Columbia, starting with uh, Copper Mountain down by Princeton with the U.S. border there, 
working your way up through the center of BC, Williams, Williams Lake, Gibraltar, into Mount Polly, working your way up to uh, McKenzie area, and then hmm. to uh, up to Red Chris, or sorry, Kamis, first of all, um, and then into Red Chris, and it abruptly comes, takes a sharp U-turn at Red Chris and comes down <clears throat> right through the Golden Triangle and then yeah. right down into, uh, into uh, uh, Huckleberry and into the uh, uh, New Gold Discovery by Richfield in 2012. Well, in KSM and Bruce Jack, I see a map showing the, the Kaiba red line there and that U-turn that it makes. And it's always such a higgledy-piggledy kind of line. I always thought it might be more continuous than it ends up being shown as on these maps. Well, it's a faulting situation from what I understand. Um, you know, I'm not a PhD type, but uh, they have uh, used the faults and, and the, identified them with this red line in particular types of faults. And if you look at it, <clears throat> there's, there's literally dozens and dozens of mines or potential mines or now being planned mines in British Columbia, and you can follow that through, and it fol follows the Hazelton uh, Greenstone. So, um, pretty well if you look at it, <clears throat> you know, those are where the mines are. And yeah. um, luckily for us, we've got three locations on the Golden Triangle LMG property, as we call it, the, the Lucifer, the Mickey Davis, and the Grizzly. Um, the it goes right through the Lucifer, <clears throat> so that's very interesting to us. It uh, comes up through Abin and into our western side, the Grizzly. And there's also a nice line coming down through uh, Golden Ridge into the northeast section of our property, which we've now found an anomaly. Um, and we have crews going there or probably they're on the ground now today. Yeah. They'll be doing work there, the same thing, um, uh, soils and uh, sampling, and then the geophysic crew will come in after them for some more IT over there. This is your season, isn't it? It is. And if you look at what uh, you know, Mike and Golden Ridge have done, um, the phenomenal job, the initial deposit or I guess uh, anomaly that they were looking at, which was the Hank, they've actually now discovered more uh, a little bit further north and a little bit further west of that. And that backs right on to uh, um, where Antipacasta and um, Urium are doing work. Now they've moved crews down there as well. So if you look at that red line, it goes right through our northeast property and then right up through. Um, Golden Ridge and, and on to the uh, Aryan property. Yep. And this is an inaugural work program for you at LGM? Uh, and uh, it's in, its current, in its current arrangement, right? Because there's a, a consolidation that you've been through with this property that's significant. Uh, consolidation, you mean in the, in the company or consolidation in the, in the land package? In the land package. You mean like the 27,000 hectares that we have in the area? Yeah. Well, and we just, you know, <clears throat> basically what we've done with the property is last year in June, we acquired um, the first property, which was a Lucifer. And then um, I acquired the Grizzly and then acquired the uh, Mickey Davis properties. And I did every one of those transactions by way of a share offering. Yeah. So <clears throat> I took a company that had approximately uh, eight or 10 million shares outstanding, <laughs> and I paid the vendors strictly in shares, no cash, yeah. and no cash requirements for work programs. So oh, nice. yeah. my, my plan there was, look, <clears throat> I don't wanna have this company with a gun to its head saying that you got to spend $500,000 by November 17, because I started this last year, yeah. or November 18, and Brutal. that's how you earn your 100%. So I said, no, 
you know, I've been in the business too long to know that I'm not in a cash rich position. So therefore I don't want a work program when I don't have to. So yeah, we will yeah. do, do it when we can afford it and we'll do it as we can afford it and we'll do it right. Yeah. But we're not going to have a gun to our head with uh, having to work program. Well, it's important to be in a position to survive uh, minerals exploration, right? The funding can come quick and heavy and disappear as well really quick. So putting yourself, uh, it would seem to reflect some good deal-making acumen or some good uh, relationships with vendors. I'm curious the stories there behind, um, well, and, and anyways, put, putting together land packages in this area, right? That's large land packages. It's a... Uh, it can be a value creating exercise. Yeah. And that, at that, that point, when you start to get to the point where others are going to want to join you. And so yeah. I think give it a, give it a year. And I <laughs> think you're going to see some, uh, some deals done on amalgamation or uh, joint ventures, um, earn ins and things like that, because the whole area is maturing, especially, you know, Abbott and Golden Ridge as our neighbors. And then, on either side of that, up north, you've got uh, G GT Gold, and then a little bit further south of Abbott, you've got uh, Garibaldi. So, you know, the whole area is coming around. <laughs> it is, yeah, and it's and that makes it all the more surprising to think that you would have been able to put together um, such a large uh, package. Well, it was a fluke, um, in the fact that. Uh, Within about two week period, <clears throat> everything was presented to us, and and we were able to put it all together. Wow! Uh, just right when things like literally the next day exploded, as far as you know, everybody looking for every scrap of land they could find, and it was all gone. Yeah, nothing to stake up there. Um, you really have to have the you have to be early, uh, or or leftover from the prior cycle, or late for <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah, that's that's true. There are cycles. So this hot area has been hot since uh, you know S. Gay Creek was discovered, and before that, Grand Duke. You know, so you can yeah. go right back to the seventies um, if you if you know if you can. And hot, hot, hot. Uh, looking at these goil, golden soil numbers too, um, some impressive gram per ton re records there. Uh, ten thousand five hundred to ten thousand parts per billion. Um, that's getting up to some significant gold, gold in soil numbers. Well, the area is, you know, is well known for its, uh, for its numbers and its uh, gold numbers. And, and I believe copper, I mean, cause that's what Golden Ridge has got a phenomenal <clears throat> first hole there. Um, you know, with some awesome 0 0.31 copper, I think. And then, uh, if you add in their gold numbers, I think they got about a 0.55 equivalent. I mean, that's an amazing hole over 300 and about 30 meters, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a big hole. And, um, you know, if GT Gold can pull out, you know, a long stretch up there, which I think they probably are on to something, you know, it's going to really uh, um, help the whole, the whole neighborhood's going to benefit. And, and, and the commodity market, seems to be at least coming alive a little bit. It's been five years, maybe even almost six since there's been much life in the commodity market. Yeah. And, you know, we we're using a lot of copper these days with electric vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so electrification needs copper. It, it's going to need the other associated minerals that come along. Um, so, you know, this, this whole area is, is going to benefit from, from the, uh, Tesla type cars <laughs> and gold too. Um, gold rich porphyry systems. BC seems to be uh, globally known, a global outlier, maybe even to some degree, uh, for these gold rich systems. Well, we've certainly got our fair share of it. We're probably the golden triangle. It would be now classified, I think, as uh, you know the. the the number one area, the hottest area, whatever way you want to classify it yeah. um, in the world right now. And so with this work that you've announced today, um, completing phase one airborne geophysical survey, 
and two lines and fairly far apart. And you're talking about another three lines, um, one of which will infill and the other two are going to move down to the Southwest to cover over those uh, golden soil anomalies. Um, and that's airborne magnetics again, right? No, that would be ground, uh, ground IP. Okay. So, uh, we've, um, you know, we've, we've got it organized. Uh, we put a nice, uh, cleared a nice area for the helicopter to land. Sorry, so my mistake. Drop the crews off. Yeah. And then, um, you know, at the other end of, you know, a kilometer away approximately, uh, they get picked up and go back to the beginning. So, um, yeah, that makes that sense. Been organized. Good. I was I was confused. I was airborne magnetics. No ground IP. That's that's what I'd like. That's what we want to hear. Uh, and ground soil samples. You know, more ground work. You can you can generate a lot of important information. You know, from from surface work. Well, it, it it's very important to have groundwork and and. Um, I'm going to also say two things here. One is uh, we did have government mag available to us, and it was flown right over the uh, Lucifer zone. And the government mag, the high, sits bullseye over the uh, Lucifer uh, sampling and, mm. and gives us every reason why um, we should be doing work there and more work there, which is what we're doing. But uh, getting back to ground work, um, we don't necessarily have it here because what happens is um, as the, the, the weather, weathering takes place, um, your ground truthing brings up um, indicators from, you know, deep down in the system, maybe, you know, yeah. 50, 100, 200 meters. Through time, that works its way to the surface, which is why you're doing your soil samples. But, you know, in other areas of the world, and I just found this out, you know, in Cambodia, um, they're sampling um, uh, ant hills and uh, termite hills. <laughs> wow. So why? Because those guys are going down and they might be, you know, with their network 20, 30 meters down and they're bringing up bits and pieces from time to time Sheesh. of what's in the soils down at 20, 30 meters deep. And so they yeah. just discovered a, a way of finding out what might be down there without That's actually horrible. doing any work, just sampling the top. Well, and everyone always, uh, soil work can be tricky, right? You got to, where's your A horizon or B horizon? You got to get those things clear and uh, quality control can be a killer. Um, for exploration companies doing surface uh, field soil sampling like this, if the ants are down there doing it for you, <laughs> well, we don't have any termites in our neck of the woods, but uh, oh, you know, it's just another another tool that people have discovered to use. I love it. To find out what's below the surface before you get there. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, it's progress, right? There's always a need for ingenuity. Um, the mining industry legendary uh, source of engineering uh, can do attitude make you know find a way to make it work and this and that and, and bc again geoscience is bc and various things like that it makes it a, a good place to do exploration work uh, questions about politics and mining and taxes of course always down the line but you know how prolific this area around you is right now um, it's been a really active season up there, which is good. The world needs it. Yes, but you mentioned the word season, and it is seasonal. Um, you know, it's a, it's a late May to end of October season. And um, in order to compensate and offset that, I um, also acquired last year at, at or about the same time about 7,000 hectares in uh, the Tutagon Trench, which is from Red Crisp basically directly east and south a bit. Uh, it starts at the Kamis Mine. Um, the Kamis Mine south has been mined out. Kamis Mine north is an underground facility. That was just purchased in January 
by Centera from yeah. Arico for three hundred and ten yeah. million dollars. And uh, there's Comis East, and they're doing work there now. And if you go the fifty kilometers up towards the northwest, which is where our Williams property is, you, that seven thousand uh, hectares I just described, you'll see that there's been Lots of work done in the area in the last 30 odd years. Three mineral deposits have been mined out and the ore was shipped to the Comis South Mine for processing. There is activity going on in the area now with uh, HDI and HUD Bay. A couple of others are doing some work in the area. And so this is an interior area. It's a little cooler in the winter, but far less snow. So you can work all year. The ground mm. is very very soft it's undulating and it's you know less much less steepness and, and more roundedness to it and so we've got infrastructure in place at the mine there's a landing strip there uh, the roads go actually halfway to our property anyway and so come the winter um, we will turn our focus towards the Williams it's had a lot of work done over a 30-year period also um, some really nice gold numbers. They've hit multiple veins in a, in a gold zone, running anywhere from 12 to 24 grams per ton over two meter sections, but multiple two meter sections. And they've yeah. not drilled lower than about 120 meters so far. And then a little bit on the other side of the property, about a kilometer north, we have a very large pore free system, 1800 by 500 meters, which has had geophysics done on it, obviously needs more. They did do some drilling, but for whatever reason, they drilled at the edge of the anomaly. We, we think we know the theory behind it, why they screwed up per se, but um, the heart of this porphyry has never been drilled and it. It really sticks out as a, as a really good target. Yeah, and that's the GIC prospect, is it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, I can see that little, you know, um, bullseye there uh, <laughs> in a, a little bit of yellow in a sea of green and all those drill holes off to the west of that and nothing really uh, targeted doesn't, yeah, and the soil lines off to the west there doesn't look like they, you know, they had some joy, um, some nice copper numbers all over those lines and the stuff over close to the anomaly too. But yeah, I always wonder about <laughs> what was done, why, and well, and grateful that they leave some opportunity for those who come along after, I guess, eh? Well, we're just, you know, it's one of those things when you look at what happened at Comis, you know, Comis <laughs> was thought to be a dead, dead mine. Yeah. And then they ended up going deeper. And so Comis North is an underground facility but it mirrors what's taking place at Afton, just outside of Kamloops with new gold. You know, uh, Tech had that years and years ago, thought Afton was mined out. And, uh, you know, somebody else came along and thought, well, maybe there's a deeper deposit driving the, the upper deposit, which there yeah. was. And so now you have new gold with one of their flagship properties on an underground facility. And so Rico's the same, or sorry, Cantera now is the same. They, they're underground, and um, you know, there's been no deep drilling on our property. I mean, yeah. 100, yeah. even 200 meters is not, is not anything. You've got to get down and find out what's driving it, and we'll find that out by doing some 3D IP with probably four to 500 meter uh, penetration, and that's what I expect will, will give us the answers. Really? So, mm, um, not Titan? IP are you thinking or what kind of, what kind of deep ground penetrating? Uh, no, we'll use, uh, we'll use wall, Peter Walcott. They'll do yeah. a, a 3d IP. Um, so it'll cool. give us a, you know, a more of a rounded uh, visual of what's actually down there. And then they can get down three or four or 500 meters with that stuff. Wow. Well, as long as you... they're, you know, they've got the right charge and the right distance apart. So we'll probably do 500 meter spacings up there with a, with a, you know, a good good depth uh wow. looking, looking at uh what's below the ground there well and i see um some budget uh in your presentation deck thank you for putting a budget 
how many exploration companies put a budget uh, a priori or ex post on how much money they spent in the field. Uh, not enough, in my opinion, best practices there. Uh, interesting to see, you know, a budget for the, the Williams for 2018 and some diamond drilling uh, below $200 a meter, you know, talking about a 3,000 meter program for half a million bucks. Yeah, well, it's going to be a lot less expensive there than it is in the Golden Triangle, simply because of uh, mold demold and the fact that you can get around. Um, you know, so we're going to be doing that uh, sometime over the winter, and uh, we plan to spend approximately, uh, I think the budget's 2.2 or something like that. Yeah, wonderful. And this news today um, on... LGM, you know, so you've telegraphed here that there's another set of three IP lines um, to be done this year. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Um, they'll be doing those IP lines in approximately seven days, those one infill and two additions. The anomaly to the north east which is in line with that red line theory which goes up into golden ridge those crews are probably on the ground now doing sampling um, they were dispatched a couple of days ago the ip for that area will follow after the ip for lucifer so that'll be a little bit later in the month and uh, we have crews also building drill pads Right mm -hmm. now on Lucifer, in uh, in expectations of uh, getting that drilled sometime around the middle of the month. Um, I've already discussed everything with the drillers, so they're ready to go. Oh, really? Uh, permits are in place. So really? that's another highlight. Whoa. And so there will be, you know, the samples that are in the lab now, the 300 and 76, I think the number is. They will yep. be ready in a couple of weeks or so. IP will be done and interpreted fairly quickly. And then that'll give us uh, uh, the right, correct angles and depths to look at for the drill program. Yeah. Um, which will start, uh, you know, like I say, in, a, in, in a mid, around the middle of the month. So the most important is, of course, permits. We have them. Also, going back to Williams, we have full permitting there too. Camp. Uh, um, IP geophysics and drilling. So wow. we're ahead of the game per se in that we're ready to go when we can go. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's important to be in that position, right? You really don't want to be <laughs> waiting with crews on hand and <laughs> yeah, spending all the money having mobilized even and imagine oh, the horror stories, I'm sure. Uh, so another good best practice is to hear from you there, at least uh, getting things in order before you <laughs> launch the most expensive and important part of this whole business. Um, and I see in the presentation deck an allowance for a minimum of 500 meters drilling, uh, $184 per meter, $92,000 for LGM in 2018. So that information is out there, that there is plans to do some drilling. Um, 500 yeah, and we, meters, hope, we hope to we hope to increase that uh, at least a double or triple of that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, and with golden soil anomalies, uh, you know, potential for some near surface targets, uh, 500 meters makes for quite a few hundred meter holes. Once this long weekend gets by and we start to get the news flow from the earlier part of the season on on the guys like Abin and Golden Ridge and GT Gold and Garibaldi that we're drilling, then I think you're going to see a different picture emerge of what's taking place in this area and um, just how how exciting and, and big it's going to be. Yeah, well, and it was really this year that I started to wrap my head around KSM uh, and listening to Rudy Franck's speech from uh, the Sprott Symposium in 2017 uh, in prep for this year's conference again, and just hearing him say the numbers that they have in reserves in the gold and, and copper categories there, 
just mind boggling, really. And and everyone says, oh, but the grades, but the sure, but the number, the, the total amount of metal in there is pretty impressive and makes me take note, you know, in a time when everyone's so concerned with uh, security of supply and you know, everyone talking about the copper markets getting tight and uh, labor troubles in Chile and again and again and again, it goes on, right? To be able to talk about sources, single sources in, uh, in Canada, uh, mm -hmm. potential production, near-term production sites that have that scale of, of life and mine life and scale, everything. It's very, very impressive. Important to be part of it. Well, the low-hanging fruit around the world is probably mostly gone. So they're calling for a copper shortage in supply by about 2020, especially yeah. with all of this copper needed for, for vehicles, et cetera. So, <laughs> so I think it's the right time to be, uh, uh, you know, back into the exploration life. And, um, yeah. you know, for every hundred properties that we're looking at, you know, at least one or two will be a mine. I wonder how long or how many cycles you've seen yourself, you know, in the juniors. Too many. <laughs> right? Have you ever seen Too real many. tightness in the copper markets too? Uh, that's always one thing I wonder because Dr. Copper, you know, like it's a very important commodity for the global economy. And to be looking at potential shortfall uh, supply deficits, that's that's a big deal. Yeah, I don't do the the predictions or the forward predictions, but that I'm just reading what they're telling, yeah. sending out there is that you know there's going to be, um, you know, a potential shortage of the of the metal as <laughs> the older mines and costs increase. Yeah, there's some juris jurisdictional issues, and the biggest one is water. You know, if you just look at what tech and um, <clears throat> is doing in Chile. You know they ha they have to pump seawater up now, four thousand meters up a mountain. Yeah, there's no water. You know the, the, the snowpack's gone, and the locals need whatever precious water is left. They need it yeah. for crops. So the only way they can get permission to do these mines is to to uh, you know bring in seawater. And when you're doing that, your costs are exceptional. Yeah, they've got better grades there, but when you look at the cost. Uh, you know the capex to get going yep. um you know your your point five copper point six copper grade just melts away and uh you know the point threes and fours that point fives that we have yeah. look pretty enticing because we've got everything yeah yeah it's it's funny you it's people love to say great is king and maybe you know but the more that I've talked to and learned about the economic optimization of you know mine plans and this kind of stuff there's so many subtle things that come in that are not you know the headline number that you really have to know about um if you're gonna do a serious assessment of these projects you know when they're at that stage um but you know that doesn't always lend itself to our uh, tweet uh, attention span that we have these days so <laughs> Well, I wonder, the, the, the tweeters will have to get other information onto the plate of the investors, which is, yep. you know, abundant water supply and, of course, power. You know, they electrified Highway 37 a few years ago, right up to Red Cliff. So, I mean, that, that really was the spark that drove all of the exploration in this area, because now we know that there's power and we can bring it in. You know, the, the tech road going into their property is goes right through the base of our property. So... You know, we've got, you know, power nearby and yeah. tons of water, of course. So those are important things uh, besides your grade. So, you know, you got to look at the whole package. Well, and I love some of, these, some of these pictures in your presentation deck on the uh, LGM2 with the Gossen showing over 10 kilometers there and everything. It's just, you know, and then, and but as as extreme of a relief as that is uh, and the, the snowpack everything up there you know the valley is and the road runs along as you say part of your property you can in in a couple places so it's a it's a unique land package i wonder um again yeah was was it it happened quickly you said in a in a matter of days or weeks was it 
cooking along for some time years prior to that? Or was it a bunch of kind of new relationships and new people that you met and it was, you know, a window of opportunity? Strictly a window. Yeah, great. Well, and, and it's important to have management that's able to uh, recognize opportunity when it appears and jump on it, right? Um, these things move quickly. That's about all I can say right now. Um, I don't really have more. Um, obviously, it'll unfold, you know, over the days and weeks and months ahead. Um, so, you know, anybody that's going to to um, have a look at all of the companies up there, including ourselves, um, just remember that there's seasonality to some to some of the companies. Um, we think we've taken mitigated quite a bit of the seasonality risk by acquiring the Williams. And um, since it's next to, or not next, but 50 kilometers away, which is next in uh, geological terms, um, <laughs> to the Comis area, which has full facilities, uh, landing strips for decent size, uh, you know, twin, twin engine uh, bombardier type planes, then, uh, you know, we can get all the infrastructure in place year round. Mr. Conrad Swanson. International Samuel Exploration. Uh, I'll give out your phone number and email just from the news release, if that's okay, too. 604-317-3090. International at SamuelExploration.com. Thanks very much for talking to me. I'm very impressed by the story. Thank you for your time.